As a matter of introduction to what you're about to see, there are two points to be made. First of all, what is being represented here is uh, Gauss's original discovery of the orbit of Ceres. This was first Gauss's first major discovery in physical science, which established him as a physicist, as he had been also earlier a mathematician. This has two implications here. First of all, the study you're seeing is not quite the same as would have been seen earlier. What has happened is a team of the LaRouche Youth Movement has applied the methods uh, used by uh, great mathematicians such as Riemann and by the followers of Riemann such as Albert Einstein and uh, the great academician uh, V.I. Vanansky to the subject of the tensor. And what this is is a tensor-based study of the generation of the orbit of Ceres, an orbit which was first discovered by Carl Friedrich Gauss. Now, the point here is, the implication of this, uh, this is not what you're seeing, is not exactly what you would think would be a, a eye visual equivalent of the, uh, of the orbit, but is shows you exactly how the orbit was actually generated with its singularities. Uh, this is based on the tensor model of, uh, as I said, a Riemannian-based model. This has been, been developed, this approach has been developed by a team of the LaRouche Youth Movement and is being presented here as the first of a series of studies of the actual meaning of the concept of the tensor as the problems addressed were first posed uh, as Riemannian projects by Einstein and by uh, Vernotsky. So uh, this is of extreme importance to me for other reasons. Not only is this an important contribution to science to make these kinds of studies, but also the issue here is what is the nature of the human mind? The ordinary layman thinks of the human mind as being made in the image of vision, or in the image of vision plus hearing. Uh, in fact, however, uh, the location of the human mind's understanding of the world around us is not based on sense perception, but is based on certain kinds of ironies of which the tensor addresses. And this is what is important here. The issue is, is physical science to be based upon what our senses present to, uh, to us? Or is the subject of physical science a principle of the universe which is not located in sense perception, but rather in the view of sense perception as merely instrumentation, like laboratory instruments, like vision or, or, or hearing, which do not show you what the world looks like, but it, when viewed from the standpoint of the mind, what it reveals when we make discoveries such as Gauss's discovery of Ceres, it reveals the way in which the human mind it treats the senses merely as instruments by which it observes the universe. True science does not lie in sense perception. True science lies in the creative powers of the mind through which we interpret our senses to discover what the principles are, the physical principles, which actually make the universe work. The purpose of this pedagogical is to demonstrate something hidden about the creative process of Carl Friedrich Gauss. By extinction, it is intended to illustrate something about the human creative process more generally the subject of investigation for Lyndon LaRouche's basement project. The purpose of this project is to establish the basis for all future policymaking for the human species. In it, the human species is to be looked at as a process of economic and social development pushed to higher and higher levels by the actions of creative, individual human beings. These individuals are the statesmen, artists, and scientists who recognize that the world around them is governed by unseen principles. 
principles which are knowable to the human mind, but which are often overlooked due to a misguided belief in what our senses seem to present to us. The true leader of human society, the true creative thinker, is someone who is capable of not only recognizing and responding to these invisible principles themselves, but rather someone who is capable of making these invisible principles accessible to human society more generally, expanding mankind's control in and over the physical universe. A more detailed pedagogical on the methods involved in Gauss's actual discovery of the orbit of the asteroid series can be found elsewhere on this site, at the link below. Here, we will instead simply demonstrate the key elements, until now overlooked in presentations of this subject. Gauss's significance lies not in what he said, but what he didn't say. His published works on the matter offer only a shadow of his actual method, which was derived from his earlier work on anti-Euclidean geometries, and represented a return to the methodological approach of Johannes Kepler. His approach hinges on the recognition that the space of sense perception is distinct from the ontologically real cognitive space where physical principle resides. The two spaces are related, lawfully however, as by a projection or a transformation. The elliptical orbit, as described by Kepler, is not a shape in space. It is rather a function of physical space-time, defined by a set of harmonic relationships visible only to the human mind. These harmonic relationships, in turn, defined for Gauss the more complex relationship between the orbit of the Earth and that of Ceres, which becomes visible under a transformation from a heliocentric to a geocentric reference frame. Each point on the Ceres orbit actually corresponds to an infinite number of space-time locations for the planetoid. As they unravel, we begin to see the process for which Gauss invented the language to describe, the language which later developed into what came to be called tensor analysis. In the geocentric space-time reference frame, you find a unique set of metric relationships. Though these represent the path which is seen from the Earth, so-called, it actually also represents an idea which is only seen in its totality by the human mind. These relations are seen to possess a hidden harmony if the process which connects these two reference frames is understood. More specifically, this harmony only appears once these relations are pursued into the relatively infinitely small. As will become clear, as you explore the remaining material on this site, this method lays the foundation for not only the work of Albert Einstein in applying the concept of the tensor to general relativity, it also lays the foundations for the later criticism and expansion of Einstein's work by the biogeochemist Vladimir Vernadsky. It will be this criticism of Einstein's work which will bring us into the higher domains of living matter and then to human activity and which will allow us to discuss the more advanced work of Lyndon LaRouche in the domain of physical economics.